Hi everyone, this is Yuan Bo. I'm presenting the work on the complexity of bidirected interleaved dike reachability. This is a joint work with my brother Chiren Zhang from Georgia Tech and Professor Thomas Reps from Wisconsin Madison. Here, we motivate our study of bidirected interleaved dike reachability using the static alias analysis example. An alias analysis is to decide whether two variables are aliases or not. Consider the following program. We perform the analysis to ask whether variable X and variable Z are aliases. In static analysis, a typical approach is to transform the problem to a formal language reachability problem. In the formal language reachability problem, a graph is generated based on the original program. Nodes represent variables in the program and edges represent data flows between them. The question of whether variable X and variable Z are aliases is transformed to decide whether there exists a valid path between node X and node Z. For the graph generated from the program, the parentheses labels on the edge represent the function calls and returns. For example, these open six parentheses represent the function call at line six and the close six parentheses edge represent the function return to the corresponding, uh, uh, corresponding to the line six. The bracket edges represent field axes of the program. For example, this open F brackets represent writes to the field F and the close F brackets represent uh, the reads from the field F. Notice that in the graph, each edge is augmented with a reverse edge. That is, for example, this open six parentheses edge from node X to node Vol, there always exists a closed six parentheses edge from node Vol to node Z. This reverse edges ensures that if variable X is an alias of variable Z, Z is also an alias of X. And we call these kind of graphs as bidirected graphs. The validity of the path in the bidirect graph is, de is decided by the formal language and the word formed by the edge labels in the path. Then the precision or the quality of the analysis depends on the chosen formal language. We make the analysis sensitive to both calls, uh, returns of functions, and reads rise to fields, then the chosen language is the interleaved dike language. Here we first introduce the dike language. A dike language, dk, consists of all words of matching parentheses with k different indices. For example, the word open one, open two, close two, open one, close one, close one is a word of dike language, d2, because it contains two kinds of parentheses. In graph reachability problem, dike language is usually used to model matching conditions, such as function calls and returns, locks and unlocks, point references and dereferences. Then we come to the interleaved the dike language or the interdike language for short. An interdike word is the interleaving of two dike words. Consider this interdike word example. If you only consider parentheses, this open one, close one parentheses form a word in the dike language D1. And if you only consider brackets, this open two, close two brackets form a word in the dike language D1 as well. Thus, this word is an interdike word. In graph reachability problem, interdike, reachability, uh, interdike language is usually used to track two matching conditions simultaneously. It is one of the fundamental framework to uh, formulate static analysis with higher precision requirement and it has been adopted by many static applications such as alias analysis, tabsate analysis, and tent analysis. Now we come back to our original problem. Is there an interdike path between node X and node Z? Yes, actually the edge labels of the paths between them form an interdike word. Thus the result of interdike readability on bidirected graphs provide us the solution for alias analysis. That is, variable X and variable Z can be indices of each other. 
For the general inner dirigibility problem, its complexity has been extensively studied and well known to be an undecide, undecidable problem. Here, we focus on its bidirective variance. As we mentioned in the alias analysis example, in bidirective graph, every edge should have its corresponding reverse edge that is suppose there is an open eye edge from left node to the right node. Uh, there always exists a closed eye edge from the right node to the left node. In the later slides, because we focus on the bidirective graphs, we really omit the reverse edges for simplicity. Bidirective variant of interdiagrammability is actually an important class of interdiagrammability. As shown in the alias analysis example, some of the analysis are formulated exactly as the bidirective variants. It can also serve as an over approximation technique for the general interdiagrammability problem because any interdiagrammable pairs in the directed graphs are still interdiagrammable in the corresponding bidirected graphs. Bidirectedness may also result uh, in a more efficient algorithm for reachability algorithm, reachability problem. For example, uh, for dike language reachability, the bidirected version has a linear complexity. However, general digressibility algorithm has a subcubic time complexity. We present the complexity result on the bidirected variant of interdigrammability. We have identified the first decidable variant for interdigrammability, the bidirected D1, D1 reachability. We further show that it is actually in polynomial time. For bidirected DK, DK reachability, we show that the problem is NP hard, which indicates that by making the graph bidirected, the inner dike reachability problem is still a hard problem. Before we start to present the polynomial time result for D1 D1 reachability, we provide a perspective on challenges for designing a D1 D1 reachability algorithm. To, the, to identify a D1 D1 reachability node pair, we need to find a D1 D1 pass between two nodes. However, such a pass may have an arbitrary lines, so we need a way to get around uh, this infinite search space. We first see how dichrogability algorithm resolves this issue. Consider this diagram for a dike pass. The x-axis represents the nodes along the pass, and the y-axis is the number of unmatched open parentheses along the pass. In general, a dike pass can also have arbitrary lines. And in a dike reachability algorithm, we can build summaries to avoid enumerating all passes for dike reachability computation. In this example, between nodes V1 and V3, along the pass, the open parentheses and the closed parentheses are matched. Thus, we can build a summary between V1 and V3. Similarly, we can build a summary from V3 to V5. By combining the two summaries, we get a summary uh, between V1 and V5, and finally, extending the summary from V1 to V5 by an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis, we get the summary between V0 and V6. Then we can, we can identify there exists a dike path between V0 and V6. Because there are only quadratic number of possible summaries, and forming each summary only takes at most linear time, so the complexity of the summary approach is a polynomial. However, for D1 D1 reachability, the similar approach cannot provide an immediate solution. For D1 D1 reachability, there are two dike languages. We use x axis to represent the unmatched number of open parentheses for one dike language and the y axis for the other dike language. Here is a D1, D1 pass example. We can still find uh, two nodes U and V such that for node U, from node U to node V, the open parentheses and the closed parentheses in the first dike language are matched properly. However, in the second dike language, the open parentheses and the closed parentheses are not matched. If we want to build a summary between node U and node V, we need to know at least uh, 
we need to at least record the number of unmatched open parentheses for the second diagonal degree. In general, this distance between node u and node v on y-axis for a pass can be arbitrary, which means that this simple summary approach cannot provide decidability guarantee for d1, d1 reachability. Our insight is to probe in the direction to see whether we can somehow to give a bound for the distance between node u and node v. We give an overview of our main steps for our result. To present our result on D1, D1 reachability, we first define a special set of passes, the shallow passes. In the shallow pass, the distance between UV nodes in the previous slides, we have a bound for them. Then we present a polynomial time algorithm to compute all pairs connected by shallow D1, D1 passes. Then we briefly introduce the theorem which guarantees that the set of nodes connected by shallow passes is actually the result, the exact result for bidirected D1 D1 reachability. We first introduce the notation to facilitate the later discussion. For pass, we define an unmatched parenthesis pair AB for each position. The first entry, A, is the number of unmatched open parentheses in the first Dyke language for the position. Similarly, the second entry, B, represents the unmatched parentheses number for the second Dyke language of the position. For example, consider a pass with the following labels. We provide the position as the number below each node in the pass. Assume that the parentheses are in the first Dyke language and the brackets uh, in the second DAC language, we go through the unmatched parentheses pair for each position in this pass. At position zero, the unmatched parentheses pair is zero, zero because there are not yet any unmatched open parentheses. Moving to position one, because the first edge is an open parentheses, then the unmatched parentheses pair as shown in this diagram is one zero. Then going through an open bracket edge, um, the unmatched parentheses pair becomes one one. At position three, it becomes two one. Because the fourth edge is a closed bracket, then it will cancel one previous open bracket. Thus, the unmatched parentheses pair at position four will become two zero. Similarly, after going through the last two edges, then the pass goes back to the origin at the last position. Along with that, the unmatched parentheses pair never goes negative. It indicates that the pass is a D1, D1 pass. Then we can define a shallow pass. We use the little n to represent a known number in the graph. A pass is shallow if at any position, at least one entry in the unmatched parentheses number is smaller than 6n. Here is a figure illustrating the unmatched parentheses pair of a shallow pass, or to be exact, a shallow D1, D1 pass. At any position of the pass, at least one entry of AB is smaller than 6n. As we can see, in a shallow pass, the distance between the node u and node v are actually bounded by this 6n. We present the polynomial algorithm that computes all shallow passes. There are two steps in the algorithm. The first step is to enumerate all pass segments in region A, B, and C in this diagram. Because region A has polynomial size bounded search space. Uh, all pass segments between two arbitrary nodes can be computed within the polynomial time. For region B and C, the words generated by pass segment from entering to stepping out of region B or C forms a context-free language. For example, consider the pass segment from U to V in region B. The parentheses are always matched because A remains to be 6n, 
from at uh, u and v. However, uh, the, this for the second DAC language is not matched. However, it is bounded by the number 6n because it is in the region B. For the matching part, it is we can represent it using a context-free grammar. And for the bounded part, we can describe it using a finite state automata, thus using a regular language. The interleaving of these two languages is well known to remain context-free. So part segment in region B and C will generate words in a context-free language. And this context-free language has polynomial size grammar, that's the searchability computation, is still in polynomial term. Then the algorithm just combine the summaries in region A with those in region B and C. Because the combination result are new summaries in region A, the complexity still remains polynomial. This concludes all the steps in the shallow path algorithm. The whole algorithm has the polynomial time complexity. As we described in the overview, it remains to show that the shallow D1 D1 path always exists between two D1 D1 reachable nodes. And our proof is by construction. Given any D1 D1 reachable path, we construct a shallow D1 D1 path connecting the same pair of nodes. The key idea of the construction is to rearrange the cycle positions in the original path such that the new path becomes a shallow one. The moving cycle approach is possible only on the bidirected D1 demergeable variant because it utilizes the fact that there is only one indexes for parentheses and brackets and also the bidirectedness of the graph. Then we we'll provide an example to illustrate the intuition about how we can move cycles in the graph. Assume that the bond for the shallow pass is 32. Consider the graph on the right. Nodes D1, A, A is D1 D1 reachable to node C because uh, the following D1 D1 pass. You can first go through the right cycle C1 seven times and then go to node B and then going through this blue cycle five times. Finally, you go to node C. All the, um, all the unmatched presses pair is computed and listed below the no nodes. So we can see that this is actually not a shallow path because at this point, both entry of this node A are greater than the bound 32. However, we can somehow move the cycle C2, the blue cycle, to earlier location to avoid it to become a non-shallow path. Here is the rearranged path. The rearranged path avoid the last traversal of C1 temporarily. So it only goes through C1 six times. And then you go to B node B and go through this blue cycle once. And then return to the node A and finish the last traversal of the red cycle C1. And then go along the original path in the, in the, in the, for the rest of the, of the path. This time, as we can see that for the largest unmatched parentheses pair, this node A, and actually both entry are smaller than the bound 32. So it becomes a shallow path. This is how we can move cycles uh, in, a, in a path. In conclusion, we have a polynomial time algorithm for shallow D1 D1 path, and we are able to show that Every D1 demergeable pair is connected by a shadow D1 pass. So bidirected D1 demergeability is actually in polynomial time. For bidirected DK DK reachability, perhaps undecidability proof for the directed DK DK reachability does not apply for the bidirected case. The undecidability proof for directed case reduce post correspondence problem or PCP problem to DK D2 reachability. However, this construction fails in the bidirected case. The bidirected edges allow passes to go back and forth, thus introduces additional undesired passes in the graph, disturbing the one-to-one -one relationship between the solutions of PCP problem and the bidirected DK DK reachability problem. The complexity 
for the bidirectional decay decay problem remains to be unknown. We provide an example to illustrate how this bidirectedness introduces additional passes. Consider the example on the right. In a bidirected graph, the following path is possible A to B to C to D to E and back to C and B, F. However, in the directed graph, this is not possible because it, this, this path is enabled by the reverse edge from C to B. In our work, we show that the bidirected decay decay reachability is MP hard. We prove the MP hardness by reducing the path of voids for Peter Pairs problem, or PAFP problem for short, to bidirected decay decay reachability. The PAFP problem is an MP complete problem. We introduce the PAFP problem here. The PAFP problem is to decide given two nodes as in T and a set of forbidden node pairs, whether there exists a path from S to T such that at most one node in each pair is used in the path. Here is an example for the PFP problem. In this instance, there exists an accepting path from node S to node T, which is S to A to D to T, because each forbidden pair at most one node appears in this path. If we consider another path, S to A to B to T, uh, this is not an accepting path because for, no, for this node pair S and B, they both exist in this path. Then we introduce our reduction idea. We want to construct a transformed graph such that if there exists an accepting path in the PFP problem, there exists a path consisting only non-repetitive open processes in the transformed graph. If there is no accepting path in the PFP problem, all passes from the start node to the end node of the transformed graph are passes with at least one repetitive open parenthesis. Then we can connect it to a checker graph. The checker graph will consume each kind of open parenthesis exactly once if there is any repetitive open parenthesis, they will not have an interdike pass to the last node of the checker graph. That is to say, the new graph is sticky degradable to the last node if and only if there is an accepting path in a PAP graph. Now, to introduce the structure of the transformed graph, in the transformed graph, for every node A in the original graph, we introduce two nodes A in and A out. And if the forbidden pair Fi, Fj, Fk involves node A, we connect A in and A out by a sequence of edges, open I, open J, and open K, and this open parenthesis represents node A. Consider the concrete level. This S to A to D to T pass in the PFP problem, then its corresponding pass, S in, to S out, to A in, to A out, to D in, D out, T in, T out, is a non-repetitive open parenthesis pass. If we check a non-accepting pass, S, A, B, T, then its corresponding pass, S in, S out, A in, A out, B in, B out, and T in, T out, you can see that between S in and S out, there exists an open one parenthesis edge, between B in and B out, there is an open one parenthesis as well. Thus, it contains repetitive open parenthesis. Then we have shown that our construction satisfies our requirement for the transforming graph. We also want to show that how we avoid the additional passes introduced by bidirectedness. Consider this similar structure we used in the previous example. Then is constructed a transform graph as shown on the right. If we want to introduce the additional paths A, B, C, D, E, C, B, F, then we must go through this, this path segment. We first go through the open B and open C, open D, open E, and the close C. Notice that you will have unmatched parentheses, this open E and close C, so this path will never become a valid path. 
So there is no additional pass introduced by the back directness. Then we introduce the checker graph. The checker graph is to consume open parentheses. And it want to consume every open parenthesis exactly once. For each checker component of CI, we use the interleaving of two like languages to first translate the relevant parentheses to brackets, then consume the desired open parentheses exactly once. Finally, recover the irrelevant parentheses back from the brackets. Then we have a desired construction for DK DK reachability. PAFP problem has an accepting path if and only if uh, the end node of the checker graph is DK DK reachable. In conclusion, in this work, we provide new theoretical results for inner DK reachability problems. We identify the first decidable variant for inner DK reachability the bidirected D1, D1 reachability. We further show that this variant is actually in polynomial time. We also show that the bidirected DK, DK variant is NP-hard. That is all for my presentation. Thank you.